Oh man, I've been looking forward to this one. This here is The Octfather, a parody of The Godfather in which Princess is responsible for stealing all of the students' snuggle toys and blackmailing them into doing what she wants in exchange for their toys back. This right here is the final Princess episode of the entire series, and by Jove, I could not have asked for a better way to end her character off because this basically gives her the taste of her own medicine that she's rightfully deserved all series long. With the episode being titled The Octfather, I'm sure you can guess that Princess ends up stealing Bubbles' stuffed Octi at some point, and my oh my was that just about the worst mistake she could have ever made. Not gonna lie, this episode is cathartic for me, and I love it so much because of that. Just the way that Bubbles is super threatening towards Princess for stealing her stuffed toy is incredible. Showing her how her reputation and status truly means dirt. If there's one thing we know about Bubbles, it's that you don't want to mess with Octi or you're just asking to be put down. It's great to see Princess get knocked down to everyone else's level. She's had it good for too long. I don't think I can contain my excitement for this any further, so let's go ahead and get started. I come to this school with a nothing but my backpack, my ruler, and my dinosaur pencil case, and I make a name for myself. So the episode begins with this poor child named Pepe who lost his stuffed snuggle toy, Patches, while playing in the sandbox. In order to earn it back, he's come to Princess to offer her a handcrafted model of the tortoise and the hare in exchange for Patches. I don't really see why this kid would think that a diorama of a classic fable would appeal to Princess considering she's somebody obsessed with more modern interests, and he kind of gets what's coming to him because at the very least if he wanted his toy back he should have kissed up to her a little bit more. This also treats us to a monologue akin to the style of The Godfather where she explains that she's the one who runs the school thanks to her blackmailing tactics. Everyone works for her in fear because she has their treasured possessions in her grasp. Except for one individual in particular who seems to always elude her at every turn. Well, you'll never get Bubbles to work for you. She never lets Octi out of her sight. Dancer guy, I don't appreciate your lack of confidence in me. Tiger! <laughs> <laughs> And finally, after almost 120 episodes, we are told that this Cash Money Cruise member's name is none other than Dancer Guy. So we've got Dancer Guy, Muscle Woman, and this tiger, who's literally just named Tiger. Wow, these gang members had so little thought put into them. Let me guess, this one is Headphone Bro and the other is Generic Dude. Sheesh, they could have been given legitimate names at least, not just get called by their archetypes. It really makes me wish the reboot would go the extra mile for once, seeing as the original did it all the time with almost every character they ever came up with. But yes, Bubbles is her sole remaining target in the school. I'm not sure if this implies that Buttercup and Blossom have also fallen victim to Princess with their own snuggle toys, or if the reboot forgot they had them too, but it's probably safer to assume that they just don't bring theirs to school so as to avoid a situation like this outright. Next, we get a montage where Princess attempts to follow Bubbles around the school, but no matter what corner she turns, Bubbles just never seems to let Octi out of her sight. Whether it's in the hallway or in math class, she even has an Octi stunt double. Um, Bubbles, why don't you come write the answer on the board? Also, apparently Miss Keen thinks Bubbles is capable enough to solve this high school level math problem, which would only be taught at an advanced level considering integrals are a significant component of calculus. Buttercup was still learning trigonometry in her honors math class, so what, does this mean Bubbles was bumped up even higher than Buttercup? Did the show just prove even more that it doesn't understand its own characters because the one that should be capable of performing this is not present to solve the problem? I know I said I wouldn't bring the math thing back up again, but I just can't let something like this go unnoticed. It's just so... moronic. Leave it to Bubbles to be an overprotective guardian, however, but what can I say? Octi is her best friend no matter what horrible shit the reboot decided to have him say in the episode Toy Ploy. Yeah, don't think I've forgotten about that reboot. Eventually, however, an opportunity presents itself and Princess makes her move. I'll never, never, never let you out of my sight as long as I live! <gasps> A butterfly! <laughs> 
The goofy body language aside, this is fitting for Bubbles to get distracted by seeing as nature is another special interest of hers. But at the same time, it goes against everything the episode literally just established. Princess exposits that Bubbles has escaped her grasp dozens of times, more than anybody else, and the montage further cements this in the plot. But then a butterfly just happens to float by so the episode can hand Octi over to Princess. It's as if the show knew it had written itself into a corner and had to come up with some lucky coincidence for the story to continue forward. Otherwise, Princess would never have acquired Octi. I think it just would have been better if the show omitted saying that it was next to impossible for Bubbles to get away from Octi. Furthermore, why not just come up with a freak scenario that has extremely unlikely odds to happen on multiple days? Any day a butterfly could fly by Bubbles on the playground and she could leave Octi alone. But having some one-time freak accident occur would provide Princess with a more realistic opportunity. When Bubbles returns back to her spot on the grass, she notices Octi has vanished and flips out as she rushes all over the school trying to find him. Unfortunately, she is unsuccessful as Princess has finally succeeded in stealing her personal snuggle toy, but we don't get to see much more of the aftermath because the episode cuts to the next morning where Blossom and Buttercup are seen together working on a paper mache sculpture for a competition that the school is hosting at the end of the week. Apparently, their entry for this competition is a plate of spaghetti and meatballs, but according to Buttercup, the size of the meatballs isn't quite good enough. This is the only purpose they serve in the entire episode. It makes one think about what the purpose of even having them in the story is when it brings absolutely nothing to the table. Oh, I should mention Princess's motivation for stealing Octi is more than just so she can best Bubbles and finally steal Octi from her. It's also because she wants to blackmail Bubbles into flying to Italy and stealing the real Leaning Tower of Pisa because I guess that will allow her to somehow win the competition even though this is a paper mache contest so I'm pretty sure she'd be disqualified purely on the principle that her entry was not made out of paper mache. Besides, the Powerpuff Girls probably never returned it to normal after Lester shrunk it inside one of those snow globes anyways. The Leaning Tower isn't important after that initial scene, however, so you can forget about it just like the episode did because it's never brought up again. Bubbles comes floating into the dining room and her sisters ask her how she's feeling. We'll help you check the school. I'm sure Octi will turn up. It's okay. I'm taking care of it. And other than that voice sounding extremely masculine and unfitting for it to come out of Bubbles' mouth, seriously, this could have been modified way better, it's also exceedingly hard to hear and is very ill-timed. This sort of moment could have been more effective if it wasn't so sudden and hard to hear. It's almost as if the first part of her sentence gets cut off because the background noise is drowning her out. Point is that you know Princess fucked up because Bubbles is about to destroy her for this. Cut to later that day where we see Princess attempt to go up and talk to Bubbles into doing her dirty work. What, seeing as Princess has managed to get all of the other students to do as she says, what would make Bubbles any different? You know, other than the fact that Bubbles could beat her to a pulp at any moment if she really wanted to. Theoretically, Bubbles could just use her laser eyes to melt Princess's head, but this show doesn't have the guts to do that. Instead of outright attacking her, Bubbles decides to take a different approach. I know exactly where Octi is and Octi will be back to me by the end of the day, Friday. Ooh, you can just feel the tension emanating from her in this scene. And that's why I like it so much. Bubbles' voice direction and body language accentuate her contempt and passive aggression to such a degree, and you can witness Princess pull back from her antagonizing as soon as she notices this. It's not something that's outright stated to the audience, it's simply present in the characters' reactions, and the show really needed to do this more often because in the cases where it has done this, it's proven more effective. It genuinely feels like the characters are reacting appropriately to the stimuli that they're experiencing. Later that night, Princess is even contemplating cutting off one of Octi's arms because Bubbles threatened her, but that's quickly shut down when Dancer Guy comes in with a message for her. Although instead of thanking him, she sicks the tiger on him again because apparently he entered in uninterrupted. Yeah, there are two running gags at play here in the episode. Dancer Guy getting mauled by a tiger and Buttercup and Blossom making their paper mache meatballs. Let's down. Tiger! Oh, get it on me, love! 
At the very least, I can say those sound effects are pretty visceral, all things considered. Like, it genuinely sounds like the flesh is getting ripped off of his bones. And this threat is enough for Princess to hold off. Although, I love this drawing and how it shows Princess literally trapped in concrete while Bubbles frolics around with her toy. Like, it's so passive aggressive and I love it. Bubbles literally threatened to drown Princess in the most Bubbles way possible. It's great. It's fantastic. This little impasse causes Princess to bring in the big guns, and by that she means gathering a bunch of school bullies together and blackmailing them into bullying Bubbles to give up because she has their snuggle toys too, and I'm sorry but there is not a single chance in any lifetime I may have where you will convince me that this character was designed to be in freaking elementary school, let alone first grade. This right here is a high school jock and there's no way around it. Can't by love confirm this was an elementary school, so that further enhances my stance on the matter. There's no way this is an elementary school kid. Not by a long shot. Anyways, these so-called bullies go to threaten Bubbles, but she ends up threatening them in return, and they run like hell trying to get out of there. Princess takes one look at her and does the exact same. Later that night, Princess can be seen sitting in her bedroom, stressing over whether or not she should give Octi back. Is the pressure of Bubbles looming over her really worth it, or should she just give her doll back and cut her losses? This is the question she doesn't want to come to terms with because she already knows her answer. She doesn't have much more time to contemplate though because pretty soon Bubbles appears in her window after saying the worst knock knock joke I think I've ever heard in my life. Knock knock. Who's there? Me. <gasps> M me who? Me. At your window. If you can even call it a joke. All she did was say that she was there. That, that's not a punchline. I get wanting to use a typical joke in a serious manner to emphasize the stress of the situation and the threatening status of Bubbles in this particular moment, but at least come up with a punchline to follow the actual scheme of the joke. This is where Bubbles proceeds to attack her, although Princess does have a contingency plan prepared for just this sort of occasion. Okay, if I can point out one thing that bothers me, it's the fact that while Princess is inside this golden shell, Bubbles gets shocked by some sort of electrical current, but then once the suit becomes activated, it loses that property and she's able to punch it just fine. So where did the electrical current go? If the show wanted Bubbles to be stunned, why not just have this shield pop up in her face right before she hit Princess to catch her off guard? Then it could at least make the justification that she wasn't expecting a giant shield to come out of nowhere and protect her. The electrical current created inconsistency and again, is another thing that the episode would have been better off without. Also, I don't know if I've actually acknowledged this in a previous review or not. It's been a long time, so forgive me if I have, but gold is actually a very weak metal, so how can one even argue that it's supposedly indestructible when it's made out of gold? She doesn't call this suit here indestructible though, but still, Bubbles should be able to melt that with her eye lasers without even trying. Oh, by the way, that was all just a dream, but it's convincing enough for Princess to go to school that day and give Octi back to Bubbles just as she said she would. But that's not good enough. Now that Bubbles knows she has her right where she wants her, she demands that all of the stuffed toys get returned to all of the students, so that this puts her out of business. And that's exactly what happens. Bubbles wins, Princess loses, and Pepe even gets Patches back. This is also the day of the paper mache contest, by the way, and it looks like Princess doesn't have an entry at all because most of her time was taken up fretting about her antics with Bubbles. Buttercup and Blossom, on the other hand, have come in with the biggest paper mache meatball the world has ever seen, and they even crush Princess with it after all is said and done. And man, is it great to see Princess finally getting the comeuppance she deserves. Just so we're clear, from now on, if you ever, ever, ever try to play with Octi again, just gasp! <laughs> But that brings the Oct Father to its stunning conclusion. Yeah, I really enjoyed this episode purely for Bubbles' performance. She absolutely killed it and really employed an amazing strategy to knock Princess off her pedestal and give her a taste of what real blackmail feels like. Considering how much of an ass Princess has been throughout the entirety of the reboot, it's good to see her getting what she rightfully deserves in her final appearance of the show. Of course, with this being an episode centered around Princess, she should have gotten her own title card, or at the very least, this should have been a blue episode because Bubbles is clearly the only Powerpuff Girl involved with a central plot. The other two barely show up at all, so there's no denying that. Princess's desperate attempts to scare Bubbles quickly turns on her, and this is a great way to show how some school bullies are 
are really just all bark and no bite. All it took was someone to change their demeanor towards her and put her in her place. That sort of psychological warfare can mess with some people. Of course, it isn't an end-all be-all solution for bullying and the episode knows this, but this is just one way of showcasing a possible method to handling that sort of situation. It's all relative, of course, but it's certainly better than the wrinkle gruff gal's solution of just giving the bully your personal belongings to satisfy them. In conclusion, The Oct Father is a satisfying episode to mark the end of Princess as a character and the ending of the reboot as a whole. After all, there's only one more episode left after this one, so the conclusion to this god-awful reboot is finally upon us. Look forward to the next review, guys. It's gonna be a doozy.